Hi, well, thanks for joining us again to the Train Shop Weekly. I'm Bill Henning. This is my um, brother Harry Henning Harry. III and Walt Herbine. How are you there. guys doing today? Uh, this is our little weekly get together, you know, just to Thank talk you. trains, talk train shop, and discuss what might, might new came in this week, um, what we find interesting, maybe a project or, or something we're working on, maybe a guest spot. Unfortunately, John uh, Gunrunner John was going to join us tonight, but something came up, so he's going to have to join us next week. So, kind of bummed. Yeah, kind of bummed. Whatever. I had a project for him. But I'm going to have to do a project, a lighting project with Adam, and if I screw it up, I'll blame him. So. <laughs> but, and I'm going to be covering a couple of new box cars that we got that came in, and a little bit on how to pack stuff. Uh, things we see that come in that uh, might help you out as far as shipping. All right, let's get this rolling. First up, uh, Walt, you're M Mr. MTH Atlas over here. Okay, we got a little, um, everybody I've already heard, probably most of you probably heard, uh, Atlas made their first announcement of what product they're going to uh, release first um, and everything. And um, some arrivals on the way, I guess they're saying. Um, their first announcement Atlas says they're going to make um, the premier heavyweight passion cars. They're, they're the um, 70, 70 foot, footers. Right? 70 footers? Yeah. yeah. They haven't been made by MTH in quite a while. They announced the road names that they're going to do is Redding, Blue Mountain, and Northern. Redding, Blue Mountain, and North Northern Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railroad, Railroad cars. They're the uh, blue ones. Yep. Yeah. Um, U.S. Army, Golf Mobile on Ohio, Baltimore on Ohio, Boston and Maine, Pennsylvania, go figure Pennsylvania, <laughs> Southern, Green, the Green and the Crescent, uh, Pet Pittsburgh and West Virginia. So that's good. It sounds like they're just going to, from what it, a little video if you saw, it sounds like they're just going to kind of like discontinue really probably not going to be much of a production stop. Yeah, they're following through. Yeah, for just kind yeah, of good. keep rolling up. But um, I can't wait to see it. I, I hope they also, Atlas brings back some of their other engines they made. made. What, what, what else? I know not a whole lot came in this week. I think production's on a little bit of a lull right now, or at least stuff coming in for us. But um, a couple things came in. What Must be all them boats stuck in the canal over yeah, there. Yeah, somebody was telling me about that today. We had a big, huge, uh, <coughs> biggest... Container ship in the world stuck in the Panama Canal. <laughs> well, what do we got next? We've got the flat spotted 40 foot box cars. They were from volume two of 2019's catalog, pages 58 and 59. And uh, what we'll do is we'll run this one on the rail to give you an idea of what it sounds like and uh, so forth. But they did the Penn Central, New York Central. We got the Illinois Terminal, the D DTI. Um, there are a few others I don't yeah, have really sitting didn't. out here. I think we went over the other ones. The Great Northern. First, first episode, the Great Northern. Yep. Uh, Santa Fe. Santa Fe. And Lackawanna. And, and, and the UP. UP. There should be a lack of one as well, but I don't believe we've got that one right now. No, we sold that one. We sold that sold one it. already. So yeah, anybody who's looking for some sound cars? The ear is sold out quickly. Yeah, let's take that one over and give it its sound run. I guess you're running your engine tonight, Bill. Yeah. Wrong. Well. All right, guys, we'll put this on and... Uh, We'll give it a little bit of switching back and forth here so you can get an idea of what the sounds are. Walt, kick the power up and let's give her a run.
that we got to run that, it makes some very interesting sounds and well, squeals. Well, the first time there's a switch for minimum and, and maximum. maximum. The maximum they had on the first time, I thought the I thought the steam engine was making a chuffing sound. Yeah, that's that's so what the, I thought the at first. first too. The first run by it sounded like a, a the chuffing of the engine. Then we put it on the minimum, and then that was a little more. It made a little more sense. <laughs> yep. All right. What are we covering next? Um, we got our I guess line I'll put out. Is, uh, this is out of the. Uh, these are part of the theme stuff. Yeah. Lionel makes a lot of theme cars, and, and I guess Everybody last year they the have their Wings of Angels. That's 2020. 2020 volume, 2020 volume 2. two. Uh, whoops. Yeah. Wings of Angels, they were uh, basically a blonde brunette and a redhead. Yeah, ba based on the uh, mil some of the military, the uh, pinup girls that would be on the front of airplanes and such. It's actually they're kind of cool. Let's see. Anyway, there they are in the catalog as well, so you guys know what you're looking for. That was out of that catalog, volume one of 20, 2020, um, the 120th anniversary catalog. Well, other, other thing is, um, is the Kate Shelley boxcar it tells a little uh, train heritage. Uh, the bat talks about on the side of the car tells you, I guess it was the bridge was not knocked out. She crawled across the bridge and ran to the next depot to stop the train to save the people. So she's kind of a save the day kind of person. What catalog is that? That is volume out? 2020, volume 2. Volume 2. Mm. Okay. So that kind of some of the neater things um, Lionel has come out with. Yeah, a little. I think I also got another one. I forget. I saw it on one of the other books. I see you got some new stuff in HO. We got a little bit of stuff. Um, this came in this week. Is uh, yeah, I think that's been out for a little while, but we did. We, we, we well, it's new to the store. Yeah, they got um, the veterans unit, uh, Amtrak's veteran unit, uh, the ACS sixty four um, number six forty two with sound and DC. Looks very nice, ni nicely detailed. Oops. Ow, oh, it hit me on the head. I know. I saw this one, they had it up a couple years ago up at uh, Steamtown. Yeah. I guess we don't have our... Uh, I'll have to show a picture of the, my picture I took of it up at Steamtown. I guess we don't have the DCS hooked up to the layout yet, right? Yeah. The DCC? Yeah. 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 One of these days we'll have to do some demos on the Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, call. Yeah, I don't really stuff. get to hear them. Yeah, because this, this is already DC sound. What are the other two you got? Um, and we got a couple of Jeep 38-2s. These are just regular conventionals. This is probably one of our, um, a more cheaper HO engine. For sound or anything with No that? sound. It's just a regular Basic run. Basic run. You know, old classic DC. You know, more like for the probably the younger kids. Or as older ones that don't have the DCC. DCC. So they sell for about a hundred bucks. Yeah, they're they're one nineteen, and the Amtrak is two ninety nine ninety nine. They're one nineteen ninety five. God, I remember when they were twenty three dollars an engine. Yeah, yeah. Man, they've gone up. But that that was just a the little 40, bit. 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that was forty years ago too. When me and Bill and Walt yeah, did HL. Yeah, yeah, the old tra trusty Atron Blue Box. They were the good old days. But yep. they got so much more detail to them, so I really... Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, they, they do, the detail is... It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Surprising. Anything I don't really like about the new ones is, is the the, metal, the plastic handrails. I actually rather have these detailed handrails mm -hmm. than our old ones. I guess but, the other piece of news or whatever, um, jumping back to Lionel. Uh, Lionel actually... Uh, announced a couple items out of the 2021 catalog that they're canceling, not not doing. Yeah, I was kind of bummed out on a couple of those pieces. One of them I was really disappointed in was the American Flyer, the um, Reading and Northern Excursion set. Um, With a nest gauge. Yeah, a nest gauge. Not enough call. That was for a nice. That looked like a nice, going to be a nice set. So I was really disappointed in that. Me, it was the Excella Pennsylvania set. 
that was kind of a bummer to me that they're not doing that. Well, I think part of the problem is they're just so expensive, so people were hesitant. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, some of the Excel, the Legacy Excel sets, the Milwaukee Road, the New Haven, the Pennsylvania, the Union Pacific, the um, I guess surprising on the list, well, not on the list was the um, to be produ produced was the Santa Fe. If anything, I would think the Pennsylvania would have been one to do because it was an East Coast train. East Coast, and they were electric, and not like Santa, not like Santa Fe has a lot of electrified yeah. trains. Or, or Union Pacific didn't have, what do you call Electrified. Yeah, so the Santa I mean, Fe, I guess, is doing the uh, the two Amtrak one, because they kind of the heritage version, and then the, uh, the existing, the real one. And I guess the Polar Express. Now, anybody that ordered one of the others, like a Pensy or that, can they put in re put in their order for the other Excel that's, if that, they still want it? That's up to that's up to the dealer you ordered it from. Yeah, well, that's why I was wondering whether the distributors or those would no. work with the customer yeah, on that. That's up to the individual dealer to handle. That's that. what I wanted to find. The individual out. dealers would um, notify their their yep. customers. So yeah, that was kind of today's news that we got. We got. Um, what do you got there in new magazines? Yeah, well, the uh, one of our favorite magazines here in the Northeast is uh, Rail Pace. So that that came in today. And that looks like town history. Yeah, this is local. This is local stuff. If you're if you're from the uh, the Northeast here or our town Lansdale, um, this is actually the history of the North Penn Railroad. Um, our local historic society, the Lansdale Historical Society, had put this together a few years ago. It's actually a really good book. Yeah. One of it's the a, oldest railroads in. The it's a small book. It's only 16 pages, you know, but it has some, some good pictures and good information. It's only five bucks. Originally, that was from what Lansdale to Doylestown. Yeah. No, Lansdale to Bethlehem. Philadelphia. Started Philadelphia, from Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah Philadelphia. Lansdale to Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Then went up to Bethlehem. Then they went out to the um, Doylestown. Then they added that they also had the Stony Creek branch, yep. which went out towards Norristown and such. So. So we do have that here at the shop and, and online, but it's it's a really a really informative little booklet. So uh, let's see, we're going to talk to Gun, introduce Gunrunner John right now, but we're not. He doesn't like us. I think he got I think he got camera shy. You know, he got a little scared, but we'll keep twisting his arm. We'll get him here. We'll try to yeah. get him here next week. Yeah, it was all me. But one of the they projects. They out of the house. But I want to do a um. One of the things he does is the passenger car lighting kit. So I wanted to do one of do one of those tonight. Brief. I have a, let me find my passenger car. Oh, that's on the layout. Yeah, I have these Reading passenger cars. They're actually MTH passenger cars. But they're nice. I, I mean, guess we got to dig some tools short. out and a foam yeah, pad and all that. all that stuff. Yeah, these are they're a nice little short car. The They'll run on almost any layout. These will run from 031 on up. But uh, they're a nice little car. They were done by MTH, as Bill said. But uh, we're going to make a little change here. So Bill's going to do this is, um, tonight. This is John's passenger car LED lighting kit, number 20100. Anyway, in this kit, it's, it's designed to do two cars, so it has enough to do two cars. Don't forget the scissors because you got to cut that strip down too. I'm gnawing it with my teeth. So in here, I mean, he has a little instruction sheet. These are the uh, lighting modules. Let's see. So he has these two light, light strips. strips. As you can see, if you go down every three LEDs, there's two little brass tabs. But then brass tabs is where you cut off your extra light. Now I'm I'm not the repair person in this place, that's for sure. You don't want your trains fixed by me typically. So So every if I can third do this, so my figure my I'm figuring I'm a good guinea pig. I never done one of these. But if we'll I will coach you through. I'll figure if I can do this, anybody can do it. <laughs> I don't know about that. We definitely know you're gonna need the scissors. Why? Because I got a short car here? Yep, because you got a short car, not a 21 inch car, which these are designed to go 21 inch and then we cut them down to what we need. There's my screws. 
All right, so this is the inside of my car. This car is nice, actually. It's got a nice flat because this this has, about... has a double-sided tape, right? Yep, it's double-sided. So side. the double-sided tape will stick nicely to there, so I got nothing in the way. Just and some posts. This is the inside. It's got a couple lights here. So I guess we're gonna pull them out. This has an interior that drops out. So let me drop this. I think these two screws hold that. Mm, will it work? Will it light? Only time will tell us, gentlemen, ladies. Pull that out. Okay, so now we got our wires underneath. Now I'm thinking this would probably fit Fits nicely right, in right, restroom. In, right there in the bathroom. So I don't know, we'll, we'll put an out of order in this restroom here. Look, look, Walt's got a toilet too. Does it? Yep. Got a toilet, sink. No way. Let me so see. Actually, we can run that just like that. Uh, right. Oh, look at that. And, 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 that, and that's a cheesy real king. Yeah. Jeez. The Reading Pastor cars don't so have that. I don't need these, right? Nope. You don't need those. We can actually clip them. They're out of here. I'll save them for if you ever need it for another project. Now pull your interior out. I can't pull it all out. Yeah, you can. There you go. You just clip the wires. Just clip no, on I the bottom. No, I can't because it has these black power wires from the trucks go to there. Then it has this jumper wire which goes over here. Yeah. Well, we need to get rid of this. Well, first, let's so these two wires will go to here. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so we'll strip that out. Which I like to do is just drill a hole in the floor. Well, Makes it easier. It already has a nice hole. Yeah, through the toilet. Nah, the toilet's in the other <laughs> room. These things suck. Another pair of wires. That's a little better. They grab too hard. So how do these things work? Are they just both? They just both crimp. sets in there and yeah, crimp it and down. Yeah, crimp it. Okay, I have a crimper tool. I think. Here, I got a crimper right here. Does it matter polarity? Well, I guess not because they're both black, black wires. So I guess that doesn't matter. One of those goes here. One goes there. Or you just slide that on and crimp it? I don't know. Guess if I was smart, I would just solder it. Nope, just crimp them. Alright, I went down to get nope, you a piece nope. of shrink wrap. To shrink wrap these that we're not using. Yeah, it's all says. I don't know. I watch them do many things. Feels pretty tight. Yeah, they're a Bell Telephone type crimp. What Bell Telephone uses for their. It's Verizon now. Bell Telephone's gone. Well. So are these going to fit in this bathroom with this thing? Fold it down, yeah. Got a lighter on you. I'm going to need it for a shrink wrap. Because I don't have a heat gun here. Crimp 
cage, right? Yep. Crush it. Mm. Crush it. That's good. Now there should be some double face tape. Uh, yeah. It oh. came in the kit. Yeah. Now those two wires we're gonna just cover. So that'll fit in there and then I can tuck these guys in there and I can. Yep, exactly. Alright, here's some double side tape. Get that side all done first. Yeah, you better put something in the window so nobody could Fog the window up. <laughs> Put a piece of tape over it and makes like uh, frosted glass. Yeah. Just a piece of scotch tape, that's all you need for the window. That nobody can see in it. Okay, that's double side tape in there. I'll tuck my wire <coughs> in the bathroom. Put the out of order sign on the window or the door. Bands we're not clipping them we want to shrink wrap them that doesn't come in the kit. You got your lighter there? Uh, we just want to shrink wrap them. Normally we'd use a heat gun but at this moment we don't have the heat gun. But a lighter or a little bit of heat will do to long. shrink it. That's good enough. Tuck them in there. Okay. You can even tuck them under if you have to. Yeah. You don't even need them out. They can go under the under the car. Maybe I'll do one of them. Yeah. Put one underneath, or I can stick it in the uh, other bathroom. They don't need to stick out, so you're not going to use them anyway. So. All right, that's that part. Now you got to. As long as you got room that you can plug this in to where you... I'll try to get my interior back in. So once you got this board in, this is where it's going to plug into. And it's a one-way plug, so it makes that simple and easy. Fighting you getting the interior back down? Yeah, the door fell on. Oh. Are you breaking it? You're breaking your train already? Yeah, the door fell. The door fell. That's, that's All right, that looks good. All right, so let me put those screws in. Oh, I love a magnetic screwdriver. Oh, yeah, they're oh, yeah. great. One of my favorite things. I got my, I made, I turned all mine into magnetics. Big old magnet? No, I took, I took a bunch of old uh, Atherin motor magnets. Or okay. Like a circle. A boop. So our module and wires fit in there nicely. Looks good. Now we need our light. Now you're going to want to fit that to these posts to posts. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, go a little short this one because I don't want a bright light shining into my... Exactly. Bathroom. So I'll go a little bit here to... But what you need to do is look at them brass yeah, right tabs. Here. So this will take me before that post. But if you look at it on your roof here, it'll take you from end to end. Right. So I'm what I would do is... short. Yeah, but you want to measure it with your... Well, well no, I, I can... The mount's right there. Yeah. So I just cut these right there. Just cut it right where the brass... Between the holes? Yeah. Between the dots? Between the dots. Ugh! Alright. So we save these for a future project? No, we should do a close-up of you cutting it. So people can see. All right, All right so now, now double face tape it to the roof. This will go to the roof like that. Just shy of our thing. You just peel and stick, huh? Yep, peel and stick. Peel and stick. Peel and stick. Peel and stick. Peel. There it goes. Ooh, fancy. It's like doing the vinyl on your race car, Bill. Yeah. Okay, so let's stick that on the roof, like so. Alright. Then you tell me we just plug this in. Just plug that in. Put our roof back on. The key's going to be getting the roof back on and getting the wire 
tucked in. It's a little bit of a chore. Okay, that's in. Now to, now to curl that wire up in that Tuck little in that room. Whoever opens that bathroom door, it's going to explode. Alright, so we'll put our artifact back on. And put the screws in. She's set. Should have timed it. So. Uh, it wasn't bad timing, considering we weren't completely prepared. Considering I'd never done anything. Like that. Yeah, for a novice. All right, look at that. I put it now. Now let's put it on track and make sure it works. Yeah. Sweet. All right, let's go check let's it out. Watch for the sparks. The what? The sparks. <laughs> All right, let's try this thing out. Let's see if we uh, make some sparks. We were totally short everything out. Success! Yes! Worked pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll hook it up to the train. Now you see, this car has the original lights, and this obviously has the new lights. Let's see what the difference is. Now... When you turn the power off, they will stay on too for a slight few One seconds. One thing often with the, um, the original lights, a lot of times you'll get a lot of flicker. And one nice thing about LED is it really makes that flicker. But, uh, that was pretty simple to do, I think. Pretty straightforward. Um, naturally, every Every passenger car is going to be different. Uh, so you might make a few adjustments or uh, you know, carry, so maybe cut a hole here or there, whatever it takes. But. Stop it right there and we'll turn the power off and we'll show the difference in the power being turned off on the car. See now that car is off and now you just had the light go out on that. So that's a big difference too. Yeah, so uh, that was a success. Yep. And it was, it actually was pretty simple to do. So like I say, if I was able to do it, pretty much anybody can. There's one other thing we didn't get to mention is on these boards, there is a small little rheostat pot. You can actually brighten or dim in the light in the car. So if it's too bright for you, you can actually turn them down and dim the light down a little. And that's just a matter of pulling the roof back off and going back into this board and just making a little screwdriver adjustment. I mean, we do, we do also, uh, John does also package these, the regulators separately as pairs. So like some people already have their own LEDs maybe. Yep. That way you can buy just the, just the regulators. Uh, brick, whatever, you know, John's, Gunrunner John's also, you know, yeah, he made a, the Super Chuffer, which now he has a Super Chuffer too. Uh, he has the programmable chuff, chuff generator. generator and then the insulated track signal driver. That was one of them we started from our layout at the house. Yeah. We, we like to have signals working. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, well, uh, John has, I guess, one or two other projects, whatever he's going to show us next time. Or so, whenever we can get him here. Or whenever we can get him here. Twist his arm a little harder. We won't get into those. We'll wait for John to tell us what his projects are. Let's see. Info. How about, how about a little info real quick? Well, uh, for, what us about? Local, for us local people. Yep. So, yeah, for, for us local people, there are train shows are starting. Um, I know a lot of us have been jonesing for about, about, what, a year now for our train shows, but there are, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I know first, tomorrow, tomorrow, we, talk, tomorrow we talked about first, tomorrow. First first one in our area. The uh, train meet at uh, Ren the Ringer's Farmer's Market up at Kutztown. So that's... That's open open air, free admission. I did a great score the last time I was there. I should bring that in. Unfortunately, uh, I think last time we went it was on a Sunday. Was no, it was, it was a Saturday. Was it a Saturday? Yes, it was. Because I took off. Okay. Yeah, they have two two large outdoor pavilions there, so so it's 
it's outdoors, but at least it has a roof over it. The weather's supposed to be pretty nice tomorrow. So. Unfortunately, I can't make it. I gotta finish my car tomorrow. So that's tomorrow. Um, there's one Saturday, April 10th, um, being put on by Cabin Fever um, Auctions. It's a Trains and Toys in the Valley, Train and Toy Show at the Lebanon Valley Expo Center. So that's uh, April 10th, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So let's see how that one goes. And then also um, the Golden Nugget over at Lambertville. Um, they're doing one Saturday, April 24th. I mean, that's a pretty good flea market. I like going there just as a flea market, but they're doing a antique train show theme. Are we going to do another one this year? I don't Out in a lot like we did? I don't know. We'll see. Depends on whether the found, found our condition started or not. That was enjoyable. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Um, be nice if you could do it across the street in the parking lot. Yeah. But then you have nowhere for people to park. Well, you can use half there. the parking lot. You want to um, do your packing? Yeah, I think we can go over some packing and... Uh, how to Some pack and how not to pack. Coming in the door. This is one that came in. We get a lot of a lot of train repairs um, shipped in, and they come in various off, different ways. Yeah, and, and one of the things like this one, like when it has a hole in the end of the box, when the UPS man or post office guy drops it off, that's a bad sign. Uh, Show them the shake, Bill. Yeah, the shake. Usually when we shake it, if, if you, you can, can hear, hear it. If you can hear it flopping around in there, that's not a good sign. No, that's a problem. We've had a, we've had a few uh, trains come in that needed a lot more work than what they were originally sent in for. So let's find out what this one looks like now that uh, it's here. Uh, we don't know how this fared out yet, so we'll know in a minute. All right, so at least we're not hearing loose parts. No, nah, but we do hear oh, a loose train in there. Loose parts are always good to hear. But this, I should not be able to push my hand down in that box yeah, that I mean, far. I mean, obviously this box is too big for it and not enough packing material. Not enough packing material. And they did bubble wrap it. Which was a good sign. Pretty loosely. Pretty loosely bubble wrapped. Not very neatly. Oh, the system. All right, we got a basic 1684 engine here. Yep. Well, it's got a busted pilot, but the pilot's not in the box. I'm assuming it's, it's not in the box, and I don't see the back of the cab that's busted off in here either. So yeah. that's a good sign. But we have had him come in with the front pilot busted off, and rattling so it, in the box. So needless to say, that was a unneeded expense on the buyer's side because we're not looking to. It's not our job to pay for the shipping repairs. Now what we'll do is to repack this, to pack it nice, we'll pack it like a sandwich hoagie. To be honest, that's how we were taught as kids is we'll put it up in the, either newspaper or white butcher paper, whatever yeah, the case may be. We prefer be. the white butcher paper. But we'll wrap it, get one wrap on it, and you can fold this, fold one side, give it half a twist, fold the other side, give it half a twist. I put some padding on either side of the engine. Let me come down, give it a fold, just like your sandwich hoagies. She wrapped really good. Now we want a little extra buffer while it's in the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it in the bubble wrap. This will give it its bounce around protection. How many some other? How much space we got? Can we go the other way? Yeah, we can go the other way. Well, we got a lot here. So. We got some of the stuff that came in. So I like to go side up on the ends too. This helps protect the ends as well. The more bubble wrap, the better. But, but kind of tightly bubble wrapped. Tightly bubble wrapped, and that's what you want. Now in the box, a lot of times we'll get paper or bubble wrap and set that down in the box and. I think it's important to choose a box that's not a whole lot, not much bigger. You want to get it so it's down in here tight. Then we want to stuff both of the ends so it doesn't rattle side to side on the box. So 
If that means taking some bubble some wrap. What's that brown paper on means? Yeah, let me get that one there. I'll put the brown paper and pull that that way and tighten it up. Pack that in there. And a lot of you know that when you get stuff uh, off us, you see how that? tight it's packed. You want tape machine? Nah. nah. You don't need it. I mean, Every, everything can, we ship gets the shake test. They get the shake test before we send them out the door. But we also see stuff that we've personally bought off of eBay or come in for repairs that is loosely packed. And this will help some of you guys that do sell on eBay, you know, stuff like I that. I got an engine yesterday. I, I just recently paused bought off eBay, came in yesterday. I was impressed. That guy had it really packed nice. Yep. He, had, he had the bubble wrap, he had it taped around. I mean, granted, he had, whole, he must have had like a 20, 30 pieces of scotch tape. But it, but at least it was held together tight. It was exactly. in the box tight. You know, he did a really good job. I was kind of impressed. And a lot of times you can tape your bubble wrap on the engines as well. But for this, you know, this shows you, you want it tight. You want to be able to shake it. You want it that if it drops, it's not going to hurt the thing. So, uh, you got to figure them shipping companies aren't that... Where's that of, box this came in so we don't lose the info on that box? i going to set that in there for now. All right. Plastic. Plastic, though. Only, only the best quality stuff. Actually, what it is, is we're going to have a model building contest. I, I love seeing... We talked about this, yeah, but I have, we didn't get into full... Yeah, I love seeing what the creativity at, at people can do with the model as well. This is this is called Build Needs a Church. So I need a church. Either HO or O-Gage. But it's got to be one of these Plasticville churches. Now, are we going to set a price limit on the build? Sort of. Bill needs a church. So he's going to buy it. The winning, he wants, He'll buy the winning entry for 150 bucks. For $150, I'm sorry, gift certificate for the train shop here. So, so if you, so the winning, so only enter if you're willing to sell me your uh, church. And we're going to be putting this on the layout, right? This will go on the store layout. Yep. Like I say, it can be either HO or O, but it has to be based off of this Plasticville church. Uh, number, the HO one's 45192. Whether you use one church, and three HO churches. And the HO is 45981. I prefer not three churches. I don't need a big church. I just yeah. need a church. Um, uh, it's more, more. these are simple, low budget, been around for years. I think like we Real have much. on our layout where we did the, all we did was do a special paint job but, on yeah, it. Yeah, add some details, so, add some painting to it. We yeah. added bushes around it and put it on a little base. So we're going to share everybody's entries. Send us, send us a photo of your entry. Uh, we'll have the information posted on our website and our and on our uh, Facebook page and such. So, Bill needs a church. Yeah, well, it is. Eh? What can you do to that plastic bill not to make it look like a plastic bill? No problem. You can find these churches anywhere, these Placeville churches. You can get them used really cheap, you know, but, but it has to be based on, on, on this. Now remember, there's church. two different Placeville churches. The one Bill will post a picture of the actual one that we're requesting, which is on the right end here. of there's the box. Right here, there's a picture. So that's not, no, I have it right on the screen. Very good. Yep. We're, well, we're, we're, our time's going pretty good tonight without John and all and interviewing him and running him through the ringer. We don't have him through the hot seat. So uh, so next week, maybe we'll get John here. Uh, and we'll get a little bit of report. Walt's going to give us a report next week on how Kutztown was, right? Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to end up there tomorrow. Yeah, I know I'm not. Oh, so with that, let's call it a night. All right, thanks for joining yep. us, and we'll see you next week. See you guys. See you later.